are you a lifeguard? She said, why? Because you try to save everybody. Because at least I can follow a set of principles and guidelines that have transcended the history of humankind. You know, the whole thing, do you, do you. I think that's a dangerous term. Mm. Do you. How do you know if you is right? Well, money isn't everything. Don't chase after money. You know, you know, money can sometimes be evil. The number one component in any financial plan is protection of your income. Imagine the decisions we make and money is no longer a variable. You come to the actual pure basis of that decision. Because when we go to the grocery store here in America, at least there's food. The love of money is the root of all evil. It's my job, it's my business, my career. Then they become the God. Following my ways wasn't working. Hmm. I became a single dad. I've got three kids between two different women. I'm in a bad pattern. So you're a Christian, right? So mm -hmm. I remember you and in the Midwest, Kansas City, there's churches, like mega churches, every block. Like yeah. it is crazy how many there is. Like we, uh, we we moved there for a little bit just to move back and I realized why I left and then we moved back, right? But we were there for some time and I was driving around, I was like, man, there's way more churches here than when I left just two years ago, right? And I realized something when I was growing up, especially at, at my younger years, I had a lot of church going people who would always say to me, hey, look, uh, like I was, I was talking about, I'm building a business, I'm trying to make yeah. money, right? And they'd be like, well, money isn't everything. Don't chase after money, you know? You know, money can sometimes be evil. And they would say all this stuff to me. And as a kid, you, you kind of think about it, but you don't really understand it, sure. right? And so because you don't fully understand what they're trying to say, if they are saying it correctly, then you assume that, just money itself is evil, right? Yeah. You shouldn't chase after money. I also find people who make excuses for the reason why they're not where they want to be financially, they use it as an excuse. For people who maybe not as an excuse or maybe even as an excuse, what would you say to those people who are just like, well, I'm scared that if I chase after money or I try to make money, then I might lose myself or whatever, you know, excuse they might come up with for people around. Yeah, them. everybody likes to quote, you know, you know, first Timothy six, you know, verse 10, you know, the, the, the love of money is the root of all evil. So money isn't evil. It's, a it's love. the love of money. And you know, where I've always looked at money, uh, for me, it, money's never been a, uh, a status symbol for me. Mm. Money for me has always been access. Mm. Money, uh, money for me has always been a tool. So I, if I want my kids to have better education, guess what I need? I need money. If I want my kids to be in a safe neighborhood, in a safe environment, guess what I need? I need money. If I want to provide for the people I love and care about, so therefore they're not dependent upon anybody else, guess what I need? I need money. So, you know, for some people though, money is a way for them to flex. Money way, is a way for them to flaunt. Uh, money is a way for them to uh, reflect some of their uh, insecurities that they have in their life. So outwardly, they're not, you know, bullied or, or picked upon, whatever the case may be, because they're wearing certain clothes or driving a certain yeah. car, live in a certain neighborhood. So, you know, that, that's one, you know, uh, but at the same time too, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 818 talks about God has given us the power to create wealth. Hmm. So if he was giving us the power, guess what we should be doing then? Use that power to create wealth. So if you understand what the source is, and oftentimes people think that, well, it's my job, it's my business, my career, then they become the God, hmm. right? You know, where, 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 I, where I have focused my life on is realizing that I'm limited. The reason why I decided to become faith-based and follow you know, God's word as, as best as I can is because I realized for the first 30 years of my life, following my ways wasn't working. Hmm. I became a single dad. I've got three kids between two different women. I'm in a bad pattern. And, and I remember a pastor approached me and said, Matt, um, the next girl you're dating, she looks the same way as the last one. <laughs> so I said, number one, you have a pattern. And number two, um, are you a lifeguard? I said, why? Because you try to save everybody. Mm. You know, so I'm trying to, because I see somebody broken too. Guess what? I, okay, I'm broken. I see her broken. Boom. And I tell my kids this. I want you to find yourself to be single because being single means being 100%. Being whole means being complete. Mm. Because if you're 100%, if you're, if you're single, one times one is one. However, 0.5 times 0.5 or half a percent times half a percent is what? 0.25. So you're actually less together and you're actually better apart. Mm. So I need to restore myself and find myself. And the way I find myself restoring myself and put myself back together and get my life to some form of foundation to me was through the Bible. Mm. Why? Because at least I can follow a set of principles and guidelines that have transcended the history of humankind. Good times, bad times, recessions, war, peace, you know, famine, everything is inside, in my opinion, the good. Now I could be wrong. And, but give me another document, give me another source that has transcended to test of time. And by the way, I listened to, I listened to my Muslim Brothers and sisters, when I was overseas, I listened to what they had to say. And the weird part about that too, Caleb, it sounded the same as the Bible. No, right? Yeah, the Quran sounded the same as the Bible. Yeah. I listened to my friends in the Mormon faith, the Jewish faith. You know what it sounds like? It sounds like the Old Damn Testament. Yeah. <laughs> so it, these things, there's so many different parallels. And I think just somebody finding their own path in it 
what will cause them to get a lot more answers outside of you just being a good person. You know, the whole thing, do you, do you. I think that's a dangerous term. Mm. Do you. How do you know if you is right? Right. How do you know if doing me is correct? How, be, how do I know being a good person is my definition mm. of being a good person has got to be based on something bigger than yourself. Gotcha. So I asked some questions with Instagram, right? Some people that ask questions for you. And uh, one guy asked, does money really buy happiness? It can, for sure, temporarily. <laughs> but listen, I've, I've had problems both broke and I've had problems both with money and without money. I tell you this, I'd rather have problems with money uh, because, you know, certain problems, uh, you can write a check and they go away. Mm-hmm. You know, when I was broke, problems would weigh and that would cause stress. Right. Right. Uh, when I have money, and I have problems. You know what that causes? It causes pressure. And here's the coolest thing. Once you figure out the money game and you realize, man, I got this big problem. It's putting pressure on me. Oops. I know how to find a way to make money. I'm not going to let this problem uh, need, need to create more deals here and make more phone calls, blah, blah, blah. And I can leave it pressure because the pursuit of mastering money gives me the confidence and the skills to eliminate a lot of problems that would come your way, especially when it involves money. Because imagine the decisions we make and money is no longer a variable. You come to the actual pure basis of that decision. So if you gotta make a decision, blah, 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 and you got five different things to make yeah. up why you make the decision and you remove money out of it, boom. In my opinion, that's the, that's the true nature of the decision. Yeah. People make bad decisions because money is a component of that. It's a variable of the equation. Yeah, because I, I realized when I was making, early on when I was, uh, wasn't making as much, but I was making a little bit of money, um, I learned that when problems hit me, and I didn't have the money necessary to solve the problem, I then would take the anger out on other people in my personal life True. and it starts to mold yeah. into it. Yeah. And then what I realized is looking back on those same problems, when I read some of the text messages of me going back forth with someone, I'm like, why was I stressing over a $300 thing? And it was just, it was destroying all of my life because I couldn't make a $300 yeah. payment, right? And that's not you. Yeah. That's not you. Yeah. You arguing with a $300 problem, that's really not you. Yeah. But the worst of you is coming up because you have financial problems. Yeah. Because I feel like if people finally get to a point where they don't have to necessarily worry about problems, and now that requires a lot of discipline, so many more aspects to it to mm-hmm. get there. But let's say they don't have to worry about the financial problems. Now they can take all that stress out of it. And then when they have an argument, then it's not necessarily about mm-hmm. finances now. Now, yeah. hopefully it gets down to the root of what is actually the argument about and not because I'm just pissed off because of something to do with finances right now. But the, the easier thing to do is to complain. Yeah. The easier thing to do is play victim. The easier thing to do is to say, well, somebody owes me something. Versus saying, I'm the problem. Yeah. I can find a solution. And that's not a popular answer because people don't want to take ownership and responsibility for the situation. But once you do, I can't, I can't uh, tell you enough how much of a freeing feeling that feels when, when the majority of the world's problems that f- has faced your current world is eliminated because you start to master, master money and, and, and eliminate some of the principles and values of what was working against you. So you, you talked about you went through a divorce, you were a single father. There's a lot of, on every ages, right? Everyone hits rock bottom in some way in their mm-hmm. life, right? And so when you're going through that, some people I found, they just collapse and they just get used to life, right? Some people is like, no, I have to bounce back. How do you, how did you shift your mindset? And when you were going through that, kind of the, tell me kind of the feelings you were going through and how did you overcome those feelings to figure out how to keep pushing through all those moments? I, I just always felt somewhere, I don't know where I got it from, but deep down inside, I just felt I'm, I, whatever situation I'm in, I'm better than it. I'm better than that. I'm Matt, you're better than this. You're better than this. Why are you dealing with this? You're frustrated, you're mad, you're pissed off, but you're better than this. And it, 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 and, and I'd be angry about it. Like, why am I going through this? But I'm better than this. And so instead of getting bitter about it, I said, let me get better about it. And I realized very, easy, uh, very quickly in that condition that I was either going to be broke or I was going to be poor. Mm. And here's the difference between the two. Broke is a temporary situation that everybody will experience. But if you stay there long enough and you accept it as okay, that's when you shift to becoming poor because then you accept it as a way of life. And sadly, most people don't shift out of being broke as a temporary situation. They think it's a way of life and they accept being poor. And what happens is instead of passing on generational wealth, they pass on generational curses and the kids think it's okay to be poor. You have another generation living off the system. You have another generation accepting that life ain't fair and, and which is true and nobody's ever gonna help us out. No, first of all, being broke you got yourself in that situation, you can help yourself out. Well, man, that's not fair. A lot of people weren't born in wealthy situations. I wasn't born in a wealthy situation. My parents immigrated here from the Philippines. Mm. We, you know, uh, English is my second language. I barely figured this stuff out. But here's the cool thing about America and why people come here all the time. 
People come here all the time. Matter of fact, the, uh, the, I went to Chicago two days ago. I went to a barbershop and the guy's cutting my hair. He's from Venezuela. I said, why'd you leave Venezuela? He says, my dad's a doctor. Why'd you leave Venezuela? Your dad's a doctor in Venezuela. Why'd you leave? Because when we go to the grocery store here in America, at least there's food. Mm. They go to the grocery store over there, there's no food in the grocery store. Uh, we, we talk about 9.3% inflation here in America. It's yeah. 42,000 percent in Venezuela. Yeah. So certain countries, you cannot stop but being poor. But being in America, you don't have to be poor because this, the system here of, of capitalism, free enterprise, and entrepreneurship just causes it to be broke for a second. That's the temporary loss necessary for us to ultimately say, you know what, let me get better about this situation. Because instead of being a victim about it, I can be a victor. Yeah. Yeah, because you were talking about inflation, right? And there's definitely a completely different climate since COVID. Completely different. Everything changed, really. So now, you know, you hear the rumors about recession. Technically, we're in a recession. But, you know, you hear the rumors of an actual recession that is going to, you're going to visibly see it in your everyday life. Mm -hmm. um, for the everyday person, how do, what is your, uh, what would be your opinions? Let's say they work in a salary job right now, right? Uh -huh. And they have $50,000 coming in every single year, right? And the bills are going to pretty much be 50000 probably more. At this point, the average person, what, they use credit cards just to be able to get by sometimes. What is your take for that, especially if a coming recession does come? Let's say a lot of people lose their jobs and, and things get really ugly for a short period of time. What would you do in that position if you're that $50,000 a year person? The number one component in any financial plan is protection of your income. If you don't control your income, then every other situation that comes your way, you'll be affected by it. If you don't put yourself in a position where no matter what, job or no job, you have to create a side business or business or income stream that can provide you income no matter what. Because any brilliant financial plan is sabotaged by lack of income. Hmm. Any investment strategy, any dollar cost averaging, any business that you got going on, if you don't protect your income, you're done. And so I think people today that have a job, the, the, if you're not even, it's not even a luxury anymore to consider a side hustle. You have to see yourself in a side hustle. And the benefit to doing that is, in the meantime, you get significant tax advantages. I'm sure when you first started your business, you didn't realize you can deduct that Ferrari. Yeah. Right? You can deduct you know, some of the luxury items that were just normally luxury items. Right. I tell every guy, everybody in our, in, our, in our workshops, hey, you have a cell phone? Yeah. Internet at the house? Yeah. You have um, a car? Yeah. Once in a while, do you like to eat food? Yeah. As an employee, those four things are non-tax deductible. Yeah. But the moment you start a side hustle, those things now become part of it. Tax deductible. Yeah. Now you can start living a tax deductible life. A book I always recommend people. This a guy that's been mentoring me for ten plus years is Sandy Botkin's book. Pay um, uh, 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 lower your taxes big time. Hmm. And chapter one of his book: Why you'd be brain dead not to start a home based business, hmm. some form of side hustle, some some form of freelance that later on down you can scale.